All right. So welcome to day two of uh, boot camp from IV Professional School. Today we will be working with Power BI. Let me just put this on recording. So, uh, so if anybody can help me and understand what all did you do yesterday? Like what was the session all about yesterday? Yesterday it was an introduction uh, of like ETL and uh, we tried to cover uh, up uh, with all those process. Uh, we got a, a scratch file where uh, all the details of the uh, project was there and we tried to clean it uh, and we had to merge with some respected column. Okay. And we brought everything on one page. All right, wonderful. And today I am going to help you create a visualization out of all the data cleaning and transformation that you guys have done. So the part that you've done is called data transformation. Once the data transformation is done, then we start with the visualization or we start with the predictive modeling. So today I'm going to take you through Power BI. I hope you guys have Power BI installed on your computers. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anybody who does not have Power BI installed? Because based on that, I'll pace myself. If I know people are doing hands-on with me, which I would love, then, you know, I will wait. And if I know people are not doing hands-on, they're just listening, then I will take it up in a different manner. So how many of you have Power BI with you? So I know Darshan has. Others? Okay. Prakash has. What about you, Ankita, Priyanka? What about you guys? Sanjeev? Okay, you have tabbed you. All right. Uh, okay, so some of you have, some of you don't. I am, uh, you can do whatever I'm doing in tabbed you. That's not a problem, but I will be focusing on Power BI as a visualization tool. So let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Ishani, and I'm going to be the trainer for Power BI. I typically take care of advanced Excel, Power BI, tabbed you, and automation of Excel through VBA at IP. Been in this industry as a trainer, work with corporate, with retail badges, and also do a lot of consulting with the organizations for automation part. So let's begin. So I have the data set that you worked on. So there is a game ID, there is a name, there's the platform, there is year of release, genre, publisher, critic ratio. And there were few columns that were still not clean from yesterday, like year and user score. So I went ahead and cleaned up that data set also. And I have, wherever the missing value was there in year, I have replaced it using the mode value of 2008. And wherever the user score was missing, I have replaced it with the median value of 7.5. Now that this data is absolutely ready, I will be sending So you all are able to access the files in the chat window. Can you access the files in the chat window? Not yet, ma'am. No, no, I've not sent it to you yet. Hold on. I'm going to delete this. I don't need this. I'm going to delete all the unclean data so that there is no confusion around it. There is one data dictionary that I'll let it be there. And this also I don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. All right. This file, close it, save as. And in the chat window. Yeah, yeah, I've not sent it yet.
Okay, now you should be able to see it. Did you all get it? Yeah, where is it? So open this data set. Now, yesterday you had merged one data with the scores. Today you will see that there's also a new column that I have introduced called global sale, which was in another file which had the sales data set. So how do we begin with this Power BI? How do we uh, you know, start with our dashboarding? Everybody has understood the data, right? What this data is all about. Anybody would uh, help me in understanding? Like, could you just reiterate quickly what this data set is all about? So, Vek, Ankita, Sunil, Arpan, anyone? Chandan? So, what this data set is telling us is basically the video game sales, right? So, the game ID is there, the name of the game is there, what platform it is using, in which year it was released, what is the genre it was belonging to, who's the publisher, what is the critic store, uh, score, what is the user score, who is the developer, what is the rating, and the, finally, the global sales. Now, once we have this data set and we want to, you know, start with creation of a dashboard, the pretty much the first and the first one and foremost thing that we should always do is come up with the theme of a dashboard. That anybody who is looking at the dashboard, what he or she is going to understand from it. So I'll leave it up to you. You tell me what should we create today? What kind of dashboard do we create today? So when I say theme or a story, I mean is, for example, Let's say this data set is being used by a new company who wants to create video games. And they are using the data in the past of the different competitors that they have. And they want to then understand that once they're introducing the new games, which let's say which kind of genre they use, they should follow, what kind of platform is more successful so that they know, you know, which platform is the closest to their competition or the one that you, they should be able to adapt and launch it in the market. So that could be one thing. You want to work with that? So we're going to analyze the data as a person who wants to enter into the video game market. And he or she is analyzing the past data to see what worked and what did not work over the period of time. Sounds good? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, first thing we should be doing is thinking about what are the various things I would like to show in the analysis? How do you think I will decide whether I should, what kind of game I should, uh, you know, go with? I did not get the clean data. Uh, did you look in the chat? Are you able to access the chat, Prakash? So in the chat, I had given you video game final. Did you receive that file? Not yet. Man, the file is not visible, man. Uh, it is not it. visible. Depends on whether you have a app or do you have a, you know, you browse it through web. Just hold on one second. I'll quickly I'm, upload I'm it. Browsing through web, man. Yeah, that's the reason. Ma'am, you are not audible. I said while I'm uploading it, why don't you guys think about the questions that we should be asking in the data so that we get our, you know, the, the output that we are looking at. We want to understand what kind of game should I launch being a new player in the market? What would work and what will not work for me? So think about on those lines, what should I analyze?
I'm sending a Google link to you. Just see if it's working for you or not. Are you able to download the file? Prakash? I'm, I'm downloading it. Just a minute. All right. No, when you clicked it opened, right? Yes, I got so it. So it will open in your uh, Google. In Google, you will go to file. But Excel file, okay? All right, so based on this data set, what all should we find out in order to understand what kind of game I should launch? Anyone? With respect to the rating criteria and the genres, whatever the game was published in the past, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can think of the game like which can be more uh, which can be reached to the people in more convenient way and easily so how do you see if you look at the past or this is called historic data right when we're looking at the historic data how are we able to understand what has worked in the past like what are the fields what are the criteria what are the parameters that we are using to understand what is successful and what's not successful With critical score, Crit critic score, okay, and user score, user score, all right. What else? Sales and the game with sales. the global sales, sales, right? More sales means it sold, it worked, yes or no? Yeah, yes. so sales is one, rating is one, credit score, user score. And the sales are the three main things on which we will be existing. But yes, what I need to focus on is that which genre works very well. That's number one. And the second one would be probably... Um, which platform and what else? Which platform worked well and which genre worked well, isn't it? Right? Or we can look at the you know developer level also. So now let's open up Power BI, connect to this data set, and quickly find out some. Oh, not power point. I want power BI. So when you click on Power BI. The front screen will come up and which will help you to connect with the data set. So on the top, you will see get data. Once you click on the get data, you are going to get choice of what kind of data file it is. Is it an Excel file? Is it a CSV file, a JSON file, a folder, a PDF? What kind of file is this? So this is in our case is an Excel file. So once you collect, select on the Excel and you click connect, you should be able to go and select the file that I have sent you. Okay, the one I've sent you, it has sales data, it has all the data, and it has two sheets, one is clean and one is data dictionary, right? So the data is sitting in clean sheet. So I'm going to select clean, and once I select clean, on the right side, you will be able to see a preview of the data. So what is there? There's a game ID, there is name, there is a platform, there is year of release, genre, publisher, critic, and all the information is coming over here. Have you reached this point? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Yes,
All right. Once this is done, then you have two options. One is load and one is transform data. So if I transform data, I'll pretty much end up in the same sheet that you were working in yesterday. That is a Power Query part in which we can, in Power BI also, it's the same platform in which we can clean our data, transform our data. But we don't want to clean because you've already cleaned it yesterday. We are going to simply load the data set. Once you load the data set. Hello. Yes, Pradipto. Uh, can we get the recorded video of that session or some of the resources like PPT? I am uh, not able to hear you very well. What are you saying? Uh, can we get the recorded video of that session? Yes, yes, it's getting recorded. Okay. All right. So once you are have uploaded the data set, right? This window should open. This is our main working area of Power BI. Let me explain this area to you a little bit before we move on. So in Power BI, the entire thing is divided into three parts on your left and three parts on your right side. On the left side, you will see the first part, which is report, where we create our visualizations and the dashboards. The second part is where the we can look at the data, whatever data we are using to create the dashboards that's there. And the third part is where we do the models. So yesterday you guys did merging. And if I don't want to merge my data set and I, if I would have created a relationship between my data set, I could have done the same thing. So it's not that I cannot move without a merge. I could have worked without a merge also. So three parts where you create the dashboards, where you can look at the data and when you create relationship with multiple tables without the process of merging. On the right hand side, again, we have three parts. One is called fields where you will have the entire table. And if you click over here, you will see all the what you call the fields or the headers that are there in your table. Second part is a visualization where you are able to see different type of charts that are there, like stacked bar chart, stacked column chart, there is a funnel chart, there is pie chart, there is a donut chart, there are maps, there are KPIs, and so on and so forth. So various visualizations are over here. And the third component is filters. So again, the filters are of many type in Power BI, whether you want to filter on a particular visual, you want, a particular, you want to filter on a particular page or you want to apply filter on all the pages. So depending on how, what you want to filter, we will use this particular area. So like I said, what we are going to do is create dashboard in this area. So let's start with our uh, objective. What is my objective? So to write my objective, I'm going to go to insert. And over here, there's a text box. So I'm going to create my text box quickly. And I'm going to write over here. Let's increase the font size. Um, historic video games analysis for new product launch. OK. We want to do historical video games analysis and video game sales analysis for the new product launch that we have. And if you want, you can make it a little bigger. You can make it bold. You can put it in the center and all these things we can do. We can, in fact, you know, in the text box, we can also apply some kind of uh, borders. Borders can be applied over here, but I leave that for now. So quickly, we're just putting historical video games. Ma'am, did you share something before? Uh, okay. What I shared was the link to the data set that we are using. Let me send it to you again. Those of you joined a little late, you will require this link to download the data set.
Did you all get it? So first thing I've done is I've put a quick header on the top of our dashboard saying historical video games analysis, sales analysis for the new product launch. So that's what our aim is. Ma'am, I'm getting auto recovery. Some That's so okay. Just cl let's cross over. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, how do you create the visualizations in Power BI? First, you decide what kind of visualization I want to create. You pick the type of chart and each chart has a meaning. Like the reason if I use a bar chart versus a pie chart are two different things versus if I use a map chart are is going to be a very different thing. So there has to be a reason why you're picking a particular type of chart. So first thing I said that, okay, if I want to launch a new thing, I'm going to look at the which genre is doing very well in terms of credit score, in terms of critic score, in terms of uh, user score, critic score, and the sales value. So let's try to create a chart. Now, which chart do you think is going to be best suited for this? Pie chart. Pie chart. All right, let's try. If I create a pie chart, and what will I drop? Let me drop the genre and let's say we'll start with the user score. So something like this. Nice, Sunil, or no? Yes, ma'am. Nice. Yeah, it's. Or if you uh, agree, it's nice. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hmm. These are the kind of charts we tell everyone not to make. This is not nice. Bar chart. Bar Can't chart. Show one bar chart. Yeah, so I, I'll just copy paste. This versus this. Which one is better? Obviously, bar chart, ma'am. And how you decide, you know, one person recently asked me uh, in one of the workshops that I was doing, he said, I find it the most difficult to decide which chart I should go by. So I have a simple mantra that I would always follow and I'll tell you to follow. If I'm looking at a visual and I'm not able to get my output fast because visuals are supposed to be easy understanding easy. of my data. This is not easy understanding. It's got too many divisions in it. And sometimes people feel that, okay, if uh, this didn't work, how about I use a donut? Same problem. Problem is still same. Instead of, uh, you know, comparing the angles, now I'm comparing the arcs. Even more difficult for me. So the best way to do is probably a bar chart. Even though, you know, people find it very boring. They say it's very old. Old is gold. It gives you the fastest understanding. If I look at it, beautifully what it has done, it just told me what's at the top, what's at the bottom. Action sports, miscellaneous is working well. Role playing is number four. And puzzles are at the bottom. To make this data even more meaningful for me, I can put some data labels on top of it. Okay. How do you format the visual that you've created? So if I select the format, I will go to the formatting part. If I select the visuals, I'll go to the format part. And if you slide down, you should get something called data label. So if I turn it on, now it's got a data label. There's a 25,000 on action, sports is 17. And if I try to see, okay, beyond 10,000, which are the ones which is giving sales. So it's shooter, adventure, role-playing, miscellaneous, sports, and action. So those can be my focus area. Or I can see I want the focus area to be anything which is above 15,000. So sports and action is where I want to focus. Right? Now, since I've got these labels over here, is this required? 0K, 10K, 20K, is the access required? No. No. So one more aspect of visualization is decluttering the visuals that you're looking at. Okay, just creating a dashboard really doesn't help. Dashboard, which gives us fast understanding, easy understanding of our data, that's the one which is better. So I can select this. We can go to the visual and we can turn off the x-axis. And I actually don't need this user score also because on the top, it's already says user score. 
now what is one thing that is missing in this uh, particular thing anything which is wrong not missing but anything which is wrong what is wrong in this visual read the title and look at the visual what is wrong with it score what score i mean score score user score and what about the user score what is wrong with it Can a user score be twenty five thousand? Look at the data. You guys have the data. Can the user score be twenty five thousand? It should be sales, right? No, but I we said right. We are going to analyze based on user no. score also. And sales, huh? This is action like action game she used by like. Twenty-five k of uh, action games are used. It's not no. It is a user. It's a user score. So what it does when you drop it in the visualization, it has done a simple sum. Should it be sum? No. Should I be understanding user score by a sum? By average. By average, absolutely correct. So I am going to select the average. Now it makes more sense to look at the data. Now the change also makes sense. So role playing puzzles platform adventure strategy finding so this is 7.4 let's say i want to keep everything 7.5 and above so puzzle and role playing according to jona right jona and the user score let's create a very simple similar one and over here all i'm going to do is remove the user score and put the critic score Again, the same thing. This is not a sum; it's supposed to be an average. average. And as soon as I put the average, it becomes seventy-two point seven, seventy-two point three nine, which is little different than what we have over here, isn't it? Role playing is at number one; it's at number two over here in critics. Sports is at number one, which is at a very bottom place. And strategy again, it is at the fourth position. Then there is a puzzle, which is over here second, but this over here is fourth. So this is how you are going to create a bar chart. Any questions, ma'am? Can we use both the model? Both the model can, as in, uh, like for average means which one is proper in this two chart? Both are proper. One is talking about critic score and one is talking about user score. Both are proper. Now, if your question is like, if your question is that we said that okay, we want to decide which one we are going to produce, which one we are going to create. So exactly. in that case, correct, ma'am. You are right. Right. Which one yeah, should yeah, we correct. create? What do you guys exactly. think when you're looking at these two charts? What do you think? Which one should we create? Absolutely, this one is the. That's a question, but which one? What do you guys think? Uh, obviously, user score, ma'am. User the? score. According user to the score? user score. No, 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 no. It it's not necessary the user score. Why not the critic score? Both are important. But how will you combine the knowledge of both the things that you're getting to understand what is going to be a best bet for me? Best fit for you. Yes. Uh, critics. You have to include yeah. both. See, okay. if you look at top five, okay, look at yeah, top yeah, five. Correct. What is in top five over here? Role play, puzzle, platform, adventure, strategy. Correct. Strategy, exactly. And correct. Actually, there are many more in seven point four. There are many things. So let's look at the top two and let's look at over here in the uh, top two or top three. What is three. common between both? Uh, average. What is common? What kind of genre is common between both? Uh, role, role playing. playing. Role, role playing. playing. Yeah. Right. Over here yeah, it's yeah. number one. Over first, here it's number two. Exactly. So it's the best bet, right? Critics also love it. Users also love it. Nothing can go wrong if I want to start off with it. It's much safer, right? Yes, Right. right. Similarly, uh, you can think about okay, strategy over here. It's that kind of strategy. Strategy over here is also at a third position. It's seven point four. It's not bottom. It's third position. 
strategy over here is also at the third position. So I can, if I have to create something, I'll do based on role playing and strategy. Based on role -playing. And strategy and fifth position. Strategy it is four. not fifth. It is fifth just because of the uh, you know alphabets because seven point four. Okay, okay, okay. All are seven point four. Understand. Right. So I understand. Like kind of strategy is also at the third position here and here. So if someone asks me, like we will do a quick insight. What did we find out? We found out that strategy and role playing should be created based on the user and the critic score. Great thing. Yeah, I understood one. Okay, now let's see, see the same thing. Whatever the user and the critic scores are saying, is that the same thing reflecting in my sales value or not? Just going to push it. Uh, okay, if I want to increase the size of the dashboard, what I need to do is click anywhere, go to the format in the visualization, I'll go to the setting of the canvas and in the type, make it custom and increase the height and the width. So I want... Height can be 800 and width I want at least 1400. Okay. So uh, now let's look at, okay, sales wise, what's going on? Again, you know, don't be shy that, oh my God, too many bars. It look horrible. It doesn't look horrible. It's perfectly fine because this is going to be the best thing that is going to help me understand my data properly. You might want to shrink them out a little bit so that they fit with each other. Okay, let's look over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the critic score and now put the sales value, the global sales that I have. Now what goes on the top? You have to make it your average. See, <laughs> interesting, right? Sales wise, action and sports are doing much better. Yes, shooter yes. is doing better. Role play is at the fourth position. But strategy, it's is it doing very well? Not at all. Not at all. Should I create games related to strategy? Absolutely no. no. Absolutely no. So no. even though critics scores are high, let's say whatever is being sold, whatever few uh, you know games are there, they are being sold. They must be doing critic review is good. However, not too many people are buying it. So it may be a very small market that I'm targeting if it, I'm, I'm doing strategy games. My market share is going to be lesser. Okay. So we have to consider all those things, right? What people love and then we are going to look at, okay, in terms of sales also, what's going on? Is the sales working or not? Now, another thing which might be very interesting to look at is do you think, uh, do you know this data is for which year to which year? Ma'am, how can I save that PDF format, ma'am? That option uh, is there in home only, no? To convert or, this into a PDF? Yes, PDF or a PPT. I want to put in presentation mode. Yeah, so you can put go to file and then you can do an export. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Understood. Yeah. Tell me one thing, uh, is this data for the current year or is it like over a period of time? Over a period of time? Period of time. It's over, over a period, period of time. Because Another thing that, yeah, it, it goes, it's a big data set, right? Now, uh, don't you think it is also important that if I say, okay, I want to get into this industry, I want to create video games, I want to sell video games. Do you think it is important for me to look at the trend of a video game also? Like Absolutely. what has been the trend of the sales? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Very, Very important. Here. Let's say Very the trend important. is showing that it's going down. Ah, uh, that's not a great market to be. Even though I'm looking at all these numbers, I should not be entering into the market, right? So how sure. would I look at the trend? So which chart would you suggest for the trends? Uh, obviously, I'm global sales. No, no. I said which chart type. No, no. Not the value, the chart type. Chart, uh, the graph one, like below graph, the graph. graph. One, two, three, third one, ma'am. This yeah. one. Second row, third one. Second row, third one, this one. Yeah, that one, that one. Stacked area, no. We'll go for the simple line chart. Line chart. 
yeah simple line chart yeah we can whenever you graph. have to see a trend whenever you want to see a trend we will line always chart. create a line chart always yeah, yeah. okay Correct. now in line chart what is typically there on x axis is always a time involved there may be months there may be years there may be quarters and then a value that gets plotted over here so in the x axis what we are going to put we will put the where is it year of release now year of release over here is a number but it's not a number so first thing i want to tell um hmm this is only year is given so it's taking it as a number but i don't want it as a number so i'll change the data type to a text and why i am able to do that because i am not going to do any max or min or average on some on my year of sale it is just going to be used for putting on the x axis so i'll pick year of sales and i'll put global sales on top how does it look how yes, does the sale look sales is dropping down quite a dropping bit dropping down it is showing up and down uh, but, but this is good only um, so which on, uh, particular jana we are not aware right yes very interesting so it is going down no doubt it is not showing a very good trend so it's kind of scary if i want to get into video games that is it a good thing that i want to get into probably not now yeah. the problem that we are facing is hold on this data is not sorted this data is not sorted that's why it's looking so weird all right one second we will sort this ascending order now it makes now it makes sense right. now it makes sense so there was an error 2008 when we did fantastic and then suddenly it's gone down drop, what do you drop, think could be the reason of that drop i'm sure all of us have played video games 2009 any crisis happened no. i moved back to india in 2020 the covid happened. starts say that again in 2020 the covid starts that is also 20 one no but before no. 20 what happened 2008 yeah, what happened yeah 2009 yeah. yeah. games would have been launched and people would have lost interest in social media social yeah. media microsoft launched xbox what involvement of spot modes launched to the people where people moved from the video games to mobile yeah very good. Yes, okay. very good very <laughs> good yeah you know there was an era where people or everybody had a console and everybody used to game then slowly slowly that all those things have gone away with the you know we had oh. cameras now we don't have a camera anymore nobody cares because everybody is working with a mobile similarly right was done a lot on consoles now a lot of people do it on you know normal laptop and pcs and on phones right ma'am so right, we ma can see that thing you know the change in the trend of how people are using it now oh, another mm -hmm. thing that very interesting thing that somebody had asked that is it necessary that this is a trend for all the genres or it may be for few so we can check now what does uh power bi does very beautifully is it kind of have a connection to each other they all interact with each other okay so if i click on action now you see it's highlighted action everywhere so this is at the bottom this is at the bottom so critic wise is not doing well but sales is on the top it sales trend was very low it was highest at let's say 2008 it came down 2013 and then we have seen a drop a big drop in the sales right then we have seen a big drop in the sales so this is still sales is i think in millions so it's not a like a it's not that i'm getting one cent out of it but it's a, it's a big drop overall it's a big drop how about if i click on sports it gained popularity went up same story came down. and again drop and then again dropped but not as bad as action this is not bad shooters right even though revenue sales is showing less but it is not bad in terms of the global sales it is still at a much higher 38.26 versus action was 0.6 in the last year it had 
right and there are a lot of things you know like over here if you see shooters it was only till 2016 sports the last data set i'm able to see is 2016 this last data set i'm using is 2017 so if i compare 2016 is about 30 and you can do vice versa also you can say okay in 2016 i want to check what's going on so once you click 2016 also the highest was shooters followed by action followed by sports then the role playing and others are as good as non existent in terms of our critics rating we had the highest for the strategy and the sports and role playing and over here we had the highest in case of role playing and adventure right correct so this was the trend in 2016 that we had so what i'm trying to show you today is that the power of power bi or any so visualization just, tool yes you just clicked on the graph right uh, mm -hmm. i mean you just pointed on the graph on that particular year and this old dashboard got changed changed so this is the beauty of power bi which is not in tableau i had read somebody said i work on tableau in tableau everything is not connected we need to connect and in power bi by default everything is connected and we have to disconnect if i Which don't want them... tableau or power bi at this ah, point both are good both are good but right now if you ask me who's leading it's power bi by far Okay. Both are beautiful platforms, you know. Thankfully, we don't have to do all these things in Excel anymore. So that's but, the best thing. Yes. Yeah, but but, ma'am, compared to Power BI, Tableau is a much uh, option available, ma'am. Uh, I think it is upgraded compared to Power BI. Is it true? I don't no. think so. <laughs> See, I'll tell you there are good things and bad things. I think Tableau is very very intuitive. If you are a Excel user. then you can pick tableau very easily right we need a lot of excel in power bi also but power bi has too many screens to work with too many places to go to that tableau has very simply find it tableau is very simple in using so it doesn't feel very tough to learn tableau but over here three things on the left three things on the right then there is a power query then there is modeling it becomes very complicated when you look at all the things i have to do before i can actually create a dashboard power bi looks very tedious tableau says okay keep creating things and then we'll see what we want to do in a final dashboard it's kind of intuitive it's very simple user interface is relatively i think easier to understand and simple in tableau okay thank you ma'am yeah thank you. okay why don't you guys create it and tell me what is your final input what should we create or should we get into this business or no see a dashboard without a conclusion without an insight is a bad dashboard then it's but just a bunch of pretty looking charts and nothing more than that so if i want to make sure that i create a dashboard which is worthwhile make sure that you are giving some output out of it some insight has to be there i guess like my in my opinion uh, the trend is going down in every aspects with respect to sales and released year but there are few uh, sports which have been performing decent so it's up uh, it's like for me it's not to get into this market at this particular time right I would so also conclude the same answer. thing. So one more thing we can do in case of our line chart. So in your line chart, you see uh, there is build visual, then there is a format, and there is something called uh, analytics. Like this is further analysis. Sure. So you can. Um, or you, ma'am, here you can select up to five or ten parameter only, no, ma'am. Like. Well, uh, 
ओवरऑल चार्ट अदरवाइज इट इज शोइंग वेरी कंजेस्टेड मोड टॉप फाइव टॉप टेन लाइक दैट वी कैन शो हियर आल्सो नो यस एब्सोल्युटली इफ आई वांट टू डू शो लेट्स से फॉर द ग्लोबल सेल्स इफ आई वांट टू शो माय टॉप टेन करेक्ट मैम राइट देन आई कैन यूज माय फिल्टर्स ओवर हियर करेक्ट सो आई कैन से ओके आई वांट ओवर हियर and i don't want basic i want the top n and in top n you can say i want top 5 top 5 based on what top 5 based on i want global sales so i'll drop it over here and i click okay. on apply so i get top 5 based on the global sale uh, and now it is looking that's look easy easy yeah and easy to understand clear yeah yeah Yes, it looks easy. It's easy to understand, and probably you can apply this thing. Let's say if I want to apply this thing on the entire page, okay, not just over here for all the visuals. I only want to look at what is based out of top five genres. Then I can do that. I can apply to the page also. And again, now that I've done that, every time I can see, okay, how the top ten is. moving is it changing or not changing in 2015 action was the highest shooter followed by the sports 2016 again that same trend is there there is shooters and actions and sports right so these are the ones which are giving me more uh, kind of revenue and in terms of ratings role playing has more ratings but uh, another point that uh, we should also think about we are looking at the crit critic scores and the user scores but don't you think they are more related to the type of game rather than the type of genre like in the sense one particular game has a particular score isn't it okay. yeah yes ma'am right so i think yes, for yes. the uh, genre it's better we look at the sales value rather than looking at the scores and how can we use the scores mm. one second i'm going to delete this one and what we can do is we can create a cluster column chart like we had previously and what we can work with this time is that uh, what is the name of the game and what is the let's say user rating and just like we had put a filter previously we can put a filter over here also of top 10 based on the user rating or the user score correct or else ma'am sure. can't we change the colors of the bar so that we will understand this color represent this role or something like that we can easily we can absolutely we can but what i was saying is that we typically would not uh, you know i was just thinking that rating is associated with the type of game, game. like i would rate a movie i don't rate action movies i rate a movie yeah one particular right? movie. one particular yeah, one, movie i don't one go particular and say, okay action true. movie is 7 or 8 that doesn't happen right yeah, yeah man same so action here also yeah perfect same yeah, action same movies action. may be very good yeah that's why same color it is Nee, color wise i can change but what i'm talking about is the i think what we were trying to work with genre was incorrect now this makes more sense now what i'm looking at is the games which are higher user rating user score needs for speed lego stars marvel maiden project we now let's say if i want to see in action which are the top 5 these are action movies in sports this is in sports in shooters there is nothing in top 5 in shooters playing nothing in top 5 in platform nothing in top 5 so actions and sports is doing better in terms of your user score as well as in terms of sales correct yeah correct ma'am so if i had to 
I would rather do it in action than sport. But looking at the general trend of the video game sales or over the in the global sales, it is not recommended to get into the business. Hmm. Say that again. So why don't you utilize the next five seven minutes and try to recreate these? Don't create this one. Try to recreate. these two these three things over here i'm trying to recreate and see if you are able to make it or not um can you explain me this uh, access part where you just change the things you know like build visualization yes so over here there are two things one is build visualization where you pick which type of chart you want to create right now yeah. for example if i work with this particular chart in build visualization there is a y axis and there is an x axis so this is x axis this is y axis correct yeah yeah so in y axis where you have 0 5 and 10 what are we dropping average scores average score but it doesn't yeah, drop up like an average score it doesn't drop as an average score it drops as sum of scores okay. but that's what power bi does just like how you have it in excel pivot table if you drop a field with numbers it automatically does a sum okay okay this also did sum but then we have to understand do we need a sum or do we need an average in this case it makes sense to have an average yeah right so once you click on this you will get all the different functions you can do and then you can select average and get the average score and each time whenever we are uh, making a graph or chart we have to you make use of the fields uh, with what respect we are uh, we are going to proceed right correct absolutely yes so the way we go about it darshan is we look at the business problem we if a business objective is given to us then we kind of build the questions around the data set let's say like that like i put a question should i yeah yeah should i enter into let's say i want to start a startup so can i should i invest in a startup which is related to video games mm. not a great idea Right. So I started with the problem. Problem was, should I invest or no? Now through this, what are the things based on which you will take this decision? Definitely sales. Business without sales. no sales is going to be bad. Yeah. Mostly sales, right? Second, okay. If even if I'm looking at the sales is good for action or sports, but what is the journal trend saying? Is it rising? If only I will invest when I see the when the trend is rising. But this is falling pretty badly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And also, so, you have yes. created an extra data called year of release. Uh, you know, like you try to make it in text format. Oh, text. The reason I made it a text format because if it was a number, just like how I drop user score, it did did a sum on user score. Uh huh. Right. If you would have dropped year of release, it would have done a sum on year of release. Okay. So when and I don't want to use sum. a text, it will automatically take into average or uh... nothing. Then it plots just like how it plot action sports and shooters. It is plotting on an axis. Okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now. Okay. So try to do these things, and you know we could have put a line over here. and saying this is was the increase this is the decrease or the downward trend of the of the video games after 2008 hence and create a text box over here saying the trend overall trend shows that we should not invest in video games case. in video games at all however if someone really wants to invest or wants to start it we would highly recommend it to be sports or actions, actions. because that's where i am getting a higher user rating also and higher profit also correct all right uh pradeep to why have you sent me the email
Ma'am, can we get this recording, sir? Ma'am, after this class is over. Ah, uh, yes. So when the class is live on YouTube, so uh, as soon as you go to our YouTube channel, you should be able to see the recorded video. Else, you can ask for the recording from the. You know, you can drop an email from where the registration link came for this particular workshop, and they can provo- provide you with the recording. And they but, are but- the people. that team member only will provide you with the certificate yeah yeah that is okay ma'am we will get a youtube also no yes yes it's already been it's a live session that we are having today ma'am what company wants during analysis they, they will tell us so there are two two kind of things that happen one set of companies are very clear with my what my business problem is right uh, let's say a simple example i want to increase the revenue of my from my website from my online business okay. right that's my business problem now you have to figure out based on various fields like say traffic engagement bounce rate click views conversions what is affecting what is not affecting is it i'm saying my business problem is i want to increase the revenue on my website so traffic is there but the conversion is not there so getting more people is not the solution to do something with the website that helps in the conversion is a problem of the business right so these right. kind of inputs you will only do when you get analysis so we may get a business problem not an analytical problem we convert right. it into an analytical problem by understanding the whole framework of okay this is what i want these are the main fields by which i can find it out and then from that concluding something that we did today Right, ma'am. Right, and there are second type of people who have a lot of data, but they have no business problem because they don't know how what analytics can do. So I do get phone calls where people say, "I have five years, ten years data of sales. You tell me what you can do for me." <laughs> Understand. So over there, we have to sit, think from the business point of view. Um, we have to think from the industry point of view we have to go through their website see what all they are doing and then create dummy dashboards for them saying okay this is the kind of things you can work with you can have a product based analysis you can have sales based analysis you can have during that time we have to analyze by our own right say that again during that time when company needs anything then during that time we have to analyze by our own yes analyze so you will have to do by your own but the point is you are also uh thinking about their business problems right right you understand? understand so each business has their own kpis so for example if you talk about a retail business how do i understand the health of my business what are the key performing indicators of the kpis of my business sales profit right. footfall customer engagement right my customers are staying with me or leaving me very important right right so these are the main kpis similarly uh, you know each and every business would have like That's say for the, sales only yeah the retention of the customer returning customer so those are the basic kpis right so each business has its kpi so if people do not give you anything to analyze you have to build it based on their kpi their kpis right yes. i understand thank you ma'am you're welcome Ma'am, I'm not able to create the bar charts. Uh, like, okay. I'm getting what error are you getting? Uh, I'm just getting a single bar. Okay, so you dropped the sales into x-axis. Okay, I I just dropped to uh, I just dropped critic score and uh, user score and both. Huh. No, no, no. For example, you will have to do them separately, right? So, for example, I'm working with the user score. So, I'm mm-hmm. dropping the user score in x-axis, and whose user score? That also you have to give, right? Whose user score are we looking at? We are looking at the name of the video game and its user score. Okay. Right. So, name and the average user score. Okay. Okay. Got it. okay and when you drop user score like i said it will do a sum on it 
but we don't want to analyze it as sum. So I'll have to go and click on average. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So, ma'am, I have a query. So yes. Which line graph and bar chart? Uh, the investors will get to know the downfall of the games. But as a person who, I mean, if I'm in part of a game company, uh, where I am to trying to convince the investor, how can I convince the investor, ma'am, even though with this chart? You can't. Why would an investor put money where there is no trend? <laughs> So is there any kind of uh, other kind of chart, ma'am, where we can showcase that a uh, little bit gr gradually growth is happening in this part of a game? Unfortunately, over here, like we do forecasting when we do trends, right? So even if you do a forecasting, uh, I don't know why am I forecasting? Oh, forecasting won't come because this is not taken as a date. <laughs> See, typically, uh, we will have to prep the data a little bit. This is not taken as a date. It is taken as a text, right? But if this was a date that we had created and then we were plotting uh, the date, then we could have shown a forecasting of the next three years. But honestly, on this trend, it is not going to look like a good forecast. Even the forecast is bad. So typical things that we do with the line chart, we created something called trend line, which shows the user of how the trend is. Or we do a forecasting to show, okay, right now it is this, next three months it's going to look like this or next three years it's going to look like this. So typically we would have done forecasting or trend line if this was a proper date date that I was working with. Because when I go over here, there is no trend line, there is no forecast I can see because only because this is a text okay but Sunil on this data you just have to make up a number to make it look good on this present data there is no way I can show the future is better got it ma'am <laughs> <laughs> or probably you know things could be that you investigate you know all these dashboards sometimes you have to do a little bit of google and understand uh, why a certain things you are able to see on the system. For example, in 2008, we there was a nice, good rise in the sales and it was very healthy growth till 2008. So what happened in 2008 that it started dropping? So if we research, we might find some factors like it may say, okay, let's say iPads came into existence. Um, iPhones, you know, 2008 is, yes, when I moved to India and you know, iPhones were very hot back then. That, that time, all these uh, touch screens came into existence. Before that, we all had those normal phones, right? So that might be the reason that there's a big downfall. Now, people don't have to work with two things or it's cheaper. So if I want to get into gaming industry, right, as a gamer and not looking for a platform or a console kind of game base, then I might focus on these app-based gaming. Right, so Correct. Got it, ma'am. Got it. Right. Because for everything that is happening on your data, there has to be an environmental factor also. So you need to think about those environmental factors. 2008, I remember clearly it was just because touchscreens flooded the market. Yeah. Before that, 2008, we didn't have touchscreens. Not everybody was on Blackberries back then. You know, now nobody has a Blackberry in their hand. So even uh, there are case studies a bit different um, when I gone through for the black. <laughs> Say that again. Uh, even the case study was different for a BlackBerry. Why it gone uh, fall up into the market all of a sudden? Yes, uh, they refused to change. Market. The simple reason they refused to change. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think they wanted the same BlackBerry to be sold for the next 10 years. <laughs> but uh, end of day, Samsung got gain benefited from that. And oh, they yes. Moved. Big time. They, yeah. yeah. I think they were the only smart phone company. A lot yes. of people did not understand that game changing that Apple had done. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, case studies. Yes, so big. Yes. Yes, I mean, analysis, ma'am. Case study is also very important, which I can understand, right? Oh, yes. It is very important. Very, very important. You know, lot, I, we, I, we, Otherwise, we cannot... We, talk about you know learning all these tools and everything but i think along with the tools a lot of business sense and common sense is required when you're looking at what this tool is giving you as an output
because Correct. if your output you can't interpret it properly uh, the whole case study goes for a toss as an analyst it's not just to work to create a dashboard your work is to dashboard get a story right. out of a get a story out of the dashboard what why did you create it for whom did you create so what like ben- research, it is getting? yes a little bit of narrative has to be there in order to make it end to end good dashboard correct ma'am so with this chart we can also Thank find you. out how to overcome also right ma'am if the downfall is happening as a mm-hmm. person from how to overcome how to make sure again the sales will grow i mean as an analyst from so, the gaming company yes only. but then this data might not be sufficient because i might also you know in order to see the downfall so if i have been pointed 2008 was a year when we saw, saw the growth in touch screen phones and that's where the downfall started then we might have to think about uh price number one how the price has been on the different consoles number two uh how i can make a person ex- understand there is a different experience on a console versus a phone you know then you have to sell the experience like iphone is nothing but people sell experience on iphone anything branded that you buy Yes. it is a simple t-shirt it is a simple phone it's a simple pen but it's the experience that they sell and they charge money so if i want to launch it back i might have to go through the history of the costing also right i might have to go through why people are getting attracted to a phone so a little bit of research in the sense of surveys need to be done and get data from people and then launch it to understand what is the pain area in the current phones why they do not like or dislike what they dislike and then bringing it out in our platforms so that would require a little more ga- data gathering correct ma'am correct, correct yeah. ma'am all right everyone this brings us to the end and i hope you enjoyed the case study and i, I hope you enjoyed the session today so we didn't make a very pretty dashboard let's be very honest <laughs> usually i end up making a pretty dashboard but i think today our focus was not just to create a dashboard to get a story or insight from the dashboard based on the business problem that we started with so that we were very successful in doing and we used different charts we saw the different fields how they are impacting our decisions and we got an output Yeah, thank you ma'am good visualization we see now thank you very oh, much yes. yeah, you're ma'am. welcome ma'am do you right, have guys. do you yes. have any other videos of this visualization where you are i do in youtube you can search for my name and power bi and iv together like iv even if you subscribe to iv's uh, youtube channel i kind of can continuously keep on creating videos on power bi tabu excel lot of videos are there so you should be you know subscribe to youtube channel of iv you will have a lot of data over there okay thank and you. in the case studies you can also ask for the data sets if it's already not published with our case studies on your youtube channel yes yes okay. so sure. all right guys take care yeah, you have you, a good ma'am. evening thank you so much thank you ma'am thank guys you need to take care two minutes Yes please oh sonal uh, yes yeah, i have an announcement to make uh, good evening everyone thank you ma'am for the nice session uh, so actually it's a good news that we are launching two new tools that is power query and power pivot all right and uh, these two tools will be taught by ishani ma'am and pratik sir so because we have started this bootcamp with these two tools only so students who attended now this session they will be getting some special discount in this course so i am posting a form here whoever wants to join this course can like you know we will be getting a call back from us and we'll explain you about the discount as well all right okay ma'am already i have taken admission ma'am yesterday uh, day before yesterday you will still like if you are interested for the business intelligence tools you will still get the discount so sure. we'll contact to fill up the form all right i'm posting in the chat section sure ma'am and ma'am thank you it was a really nice session thank you sonali all right everyone have a good evening thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you